Well, hello, YouTube. On this week's podcast, we're going to be looking at a upcoming movie, My First Impressions, although there's still very little information out there. So again, be warned, this is being recorded on August 8th, 2011. If you're watching this a month or two months from now, you probably have more information, perhaps even a trailer or even a poster, which is the first thing I'm going to say. Yes, I am aware this is a fan-made poster I have up here. There is no official poster out yet, so I had to make do with World War Z stuff, which is the subject of this week's podcast. I'm excited for this. This is I've read the book. I have not read the Zombie Survival Guide book, though, that Max Brooks wrote before World War Z, so... I can't comment on that, but uh, I moderately enjoyed the book. Uh, there was a few things that annoyed me in the book. I think it, it, at points, I think it let its politics override its kind of common sense. Or now, that's probably me speaking as a guy who has, at the graduate level, studied policy and such, and therefore you, you kind of. When you have that type of education, it does ruin some forms of entertainment because you're like, that's not how things work. That wouldn't happen. Or why would this character be acting that way? Why would this nation, especially, if I also have background in foreign policy, so you're kind of questioning, well, how would that turn out that way? And additionally, I've also studied military stuff, so go to any forum that has a large number of, you know, or shall I say, armchair generals, or even forums that have a lot of actual military people on there, you'll see most of them have ripped the book a lot on its presentation of military tactics and how actual, especially the ones that I've checked out that had actual military members, how they would even approach fighting the zombies is completely different to how the book shows stuff. So that ruined... that. For me, that's what ruined elements. But it was a fun, kind of gloomy book, and there was also other things with the book, like... At times, it seems there was way more zombies than there ever were people on Earth. <laughs> uh, which is kind of always the problem with, uh, I think, zombie movies. is All of a sudden, in a small, you know, some small town gets infected with the zombies. All of a sudden, there's thousands of zombies all over the place. So if you were kind of kind of counting up, there's like, wow. All of a sudden, there's about three times the amount of zombies that there ever were people <laughs> in this small town. Which you've seen, I've seen in a few ones. It's... Yeah, the excuse they try to sell is concentrated, but they go in every place they go in, like the town. Always there's a ton of zombies, and you're kind of wondering, where are all these zombies coming from? I mean, it's different when it's like Dawn of the Dead and it's taking place in a city. But uh, that's my digression. Kind of, I guess that's my slight digression and critique of the zombie genre. And something I think the book falls into. But hey, I mean, this is a serious movie. We've seen good zombie movies done. And... Maybe this will be one of them. The director of this particular film has done, in my opinion, good stuff. Maybe others are, will disagree, but uh, it's Mark uh, Forster. Or Forster. Forster? You, anyone who listens to me knows I hate, I get stuff. Names are my nemesis. <laughs> but uh, you probably best know him. He's the director for, of Quantum, uh, Quantum of Solace, which has its critics. I I enjoyed the film. Uh, hopefully, though, when it comes to action, he is not as, uh, well, choppy with uh, the action scenes. Although he wasn't that bad with Quantum of Solace. I've seen a lot worse. And I think, generally, he's somewhat of a young director. Uh, I mean, he's been directing things... Uh, 1995 was his first uh, debut film. But he's done other stuff. He's done Monsters Ball, which garnered a lot of attention. Uh, he's done Finding Neverland. Uh, that's pretty much it for stuff that he has, well, that people will know. He's done other films, of course, as well. I think he's got about... Do, 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 one, let's see here. Four, five, six, seven. He's got about eight films under his belt, so he's experienced enough to handle a big-budget film. Um, he's just not done a... I would say, a, you know, a, I would say blockbuster movie? I think think that's what this is going to be. Kind of a summer blockbuster film, but not necessarily, you know, a stupid blockbuster film. Just because something's produced... Uh, I'm not even sure when the release date for this is yet. I, I think that, that is still up in the air as well. It's sometime in 2012. It could be in the summer. It could be in the... Uh, that kind of Christmas 
big budget movie. That's the other, the, what I like to call the mini summer season, only it's in the winter, where you'll have a lot of stuff between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, where a lot of big stuff. To me, this seems more like a summer film. Zombies, whatever early summer people like to see zombie movies. So, hopefully, we'll say that there. But the big star of this film, if you don't already know, is Brad Pitt, who I'm happy for that. Brad Pitt killing zombies sounds good to me. Uh, in fact, I've, from what I understand, he really pushed for this movie too. Really pushed to be in it. So he's a really big supporter of this film. And it's good to see that because if you know the main actor is really pushing for a film, you know he's not going to give a kind of you know by the numbers performance. That come here, pick up my check, go. Uh, it's good to see that. It's good to know that the actual cast beyond has some passion. Now, I'm uh, about to show you a couple photos, and this is this is the reason why I decided to pick this week to talk about it. Normally, I like to wait until some stuff has come about, you know, a trailer, a poster even. As I said before, I'm using a fan-made poster, which looks all right. Uh, but there are there has been a few pictures released. Now, these are not production still photos, and that's important to keep in mind, because production stills are going to show you basically what the camera is showing. They're taking, you know, by a professional photographer hired by the crew uh, and a release to show released by the studio to, to give a demonstration of what's going to be the film hell with nowadays a lot of times production stills are actually just a freeze frame from you know the actual filming cameras so these though however are not these are taken at what it looks like filming that was going on at some sort of naval base so there's probably a couple of uh, seamen there that the, the film crew can't control because they're guests on the naval base, uh, which is always the downside of filming. Uh, when studios lose control, they always tend to uh, well have stuff leak. I mean, we saw that with uh, if you I should probably do a video on this, but all the stuff that's leaking from the uh, the Batman uh, set in Pittsburgh. Apparently, uh, unlike Chicago, or apparently in Chicago, they were really able to keep a tight lid on the set. It looks like the Pittsburgh poli uh, police in Pittsburgh City are not as uh, cooperative, shall we say, or at least not as uh, inclined to restrict their uh, the movements of uh, citizens and such. So there's a lot of stuff blocking off. So a lot of stuff's coming out with this. This looks to be the same situation here. They're in a, the movie's being filmed in an area where they don't have the type of control they normally would. So these aren't professional photos. These are taken by uh, some bystander as they're filming uh, stuff on the ocean. Now, I do recall from the book that we were talking about that there were you know, ships at sea and people were kind of went out to the ocean. Kind of, if you recall, that they had a similar thing in uh, uh, I Am Legend. They were talking about there were you know, ships where people survived. And this kind of makes sense, right? Zombies can't climb up out of the water and... Even if they can swim, they can't necessarily get on board a boat. So it's, it's a rather safe place to go. Now, we don't know how big of a role... Now, like I said, they were mentioned in the novel. I do, they weren't a main center of the novel. But we're not sure how close this film's going to stick to the novel. Now, I, for those of you really unfamiliar with the novel, I should, I should explain this. Uh, the novel is set up kind of like War and Peace in its narrative... I think that's the right novel I'm thinking of, in that it's, uh, I have not read it because I think it's massive, uh, it's told through multiple people. Basically, the, the novel is supposed to be a, a collection of uh, transcripts of interviews that a uh, individual who's going around collecting survivor stories from the then one war against the zombies about what had happened. And thus, you know, on the, uh, the meta level allows Max Brooks to make political comments on how things would go. Now the problem, you know, like, like I said, with me going with the book is that some of the uh, the things you want to make politically don't match up how things would probably go in, a real, in the real world. But, uh, if I'm about that, let's get to the first video, or the first one that's been up here is uh, Matthew Fox, who you probably remember from... Uh, Lost. Here he is on a naval vessel. Uh, I'm not sure what his role is in this. It it had been talk that he was going to be in it, and then they were saying there was a rumor that he wasn't. Now, obviously, the rumor was proved incorrect because 
hey, rumors are rumors. Perhaps he had a slight disagreement on some small thing with his contract, and then somebody tells you know, a TMZ reporter that, and that turns into he's no longer part of the film. When in fact, you know, it's just they were arguing over cable in his hotel room or something. But this, uh, as you can see, he looks like he's got a uh, a somewhat military garb. I mean, it's not a uniform I recognize, but it's it's looks kind of like military clothing. You know, that could be a thing that they're going to show in the movie. Uh, I think we're going to. I'll show you in a later picture how people seem to always be armed, and that was kind of an ideal within the uh, within the novel itself. That later on, people kind of really became militarized and vigilant in their. Uh, Or vigilant, I should say, uh, in their uh, personal lives, they started. You know, in the novel, it was described that people started making their homes basically as fortresses. You know, in Japan, people were really walking around now with katanas and stuff going everywhere. So this could be you know, one of those subtle things that they put in there that they remember from the film. So he could be a civilian. He might be something else. I'm not sure. Like I said, how the novel was set up with it was a collection of different accounts. That allows, I think, for the the film's crew. Or from the for the writers who I think and Max Brooks was involved to kind of go their own way. They could they could have really no characters from the novel appear and still say it fits in with the the novel. This is just a separate collection because in the book in this uh, Brad Pitt is supposedly a UN representative go around, going around and collection uh, collecting stories. So he might be a they might even have I, I forget if his character I forget the main character's name from the book. I'm not sure if Brad Pitt is playing that same character. But uh, enough of this is obviously he's on a ship, he's on a naval ship now, whether he's in the Navy, maybe he's a SEAL of some sort, or he's a survivor, because I will show you this next picture kind of makes me wonder if it's a he's a survivor or, you know, part of the military. And here we have a helicopter on board a ship. Uh, if you look to the left, you'll see a green screen, and then you'll see what are obviously civilians. Looks like they're being evacuated of some sort, which is making me wonder. This looks like it's the same ship. Now, it wouldn't be past Hollywood to film a cup, you know, use the same ship, but have it in the plot be several different ships. Um, although I'm not sure if this is on a preserve. I didn't get a really good ship uh, look at the overall ship, but uh, I'm not sure if this is an actual Navy ship or one of those museum ships, because that's not a uh, U.S. Navy helicopter. Uh, uh, it is a Dolphin, which is a French helicopter, which is used by the U.S. Coast Guard. Uh, probably the most prominent. If, if you Normally, if you've seen a U.S. Uh, Coast Guard chopper, you've probably seen this is the type of chopper you've seen. Uh, it is used by you know, various countries, but I mean, obviously, it's got the U.S. Uh, roundel on it. But it's painted black, and as far as I can recall, and I did use to work on a military base. You know, the Army helicopters are not, or their military helicopters are not typically painted black. So I don't think it's that's what that's what's making me question if they have how much. And if you're wondering why I'm bringing this up, it's just for me bringing up how much actual military support they have for this film. Uh, which can go a long way in helping a movie seem authentic and getting really good stuff, because, you know, as much as you complain about Michael Bay's stuff, generally the stuff with the military is rather good. And I, I think me and a lot of other people are kind of tired of the typical military is completely incompetent whenever it can handle something. I, I prefer military confidence in my movies. That's just me. <laughs> Doesn't mean they have to win, it just has to show they're confident, but they were confident they can. They still have problems. Uh, which well, I think was slightly part of the book's point to a degree. I, I'll get into a little bit of that. But obviously this, this could be a scene where they're in green screen. Now I'm not even sure if this is you know, actually stuff being filmed, or are they doing rehearsals? Because it looks like there's a couple of guys there just sitting. I don't clearly see the camera. They obviously have a green screen, so they might be putting in, like, a huge, you know, they might show in the green screen behind it. There's nothing but waves and waves of, mi of military guys. It could be that there's a, you know, swarm of zombies behind them. 
but it, it is interesting they didn't use an official helicopter. Now it could just be that uh, they're going to show and, and maybe this takes off and it lands somewhere else. So they wanted to have their own helicopter because maybe the military wasn't going to uh, allow them to, you know, the military helps out to a degree. They're not going to overly you know, extend resources. So if they wanted to have this thing take off and land in a mountainous area, uh, perhaps the military wasn't going to do that, which is why they got their own chopper. Again, like I said, I'm not sure what type of... This could be a slightly older vessel that's been retired, and that's why they're filming on it. Uh, but hopefully they got film, uh, you know, actual Pentagon support, because it does help with the film, believe me. Uh, generally, the best people to play background soldiers are actual soldiers, or in this case, seamen. Uh, but our final photo, which was actually taken at the same... I didn't show every photo that was released before I get into this, and there is a wider one shown. Basically, that this ship is parked next to the other ship that they were filming, and that they did kind of sprayed on, kind of like that, not quite, but kind of like that that foam spray you can do at uh, Christmas time for fake snow. They basically had this snow down on, you know, normal Hollywood stuff. You know, it's Hollywood magic. It's a uh, everyone else around the ship's wearing like sorts of shirts that they're on there with. This heavy clothing. This is making me rather interesting. It is, I believe, that guy center with the dark red hood is Brad Pitt. It's not the best picture or angle to get him at. That's what Blaster basically indicated that this was Brad Pitt. I don't quite see it. Yeah, he is looking a little scruffy looking, and the camera is not the highest quality, so it is hard to tell. Uh, now, this. One of the things to point out is like they're wearing big, heavy clothing. Of course, it's cold, or at least implied to be cold. But uh, if you look on his arm there, he also has like built-on armor, which is kind of cool. Goes into a little bit of kind of what everyone visions what you would do in a zombie apocalypse. You'd start putting armor on your arms and other areas where you know a zombie would try to bite you, so you can't be bitten. Uh, now this might be taking place in Russia. It, it, Russia plays a rather interesting role in the uh, in in the books which uh, kind of reverts to, uh, it becomes like a religious state with a czar again. Uh, interesting commentary. I wasn't sure exactly what Brooks was trying to point out there, but uh, yeah, the Russians kind of re rally around uh, in, the, in the novel, kind of in their desperation, kind of go back to their uh, religious values and it didn't explain how, but some, somehow, as a result of that, they reinstalled the Tsar. Uh, and in the novels, he did go to Russia and interviewed a couple of people about that. Now, does that mean there's going to be a Russian... You know, are they going to explain this? Or is this, you know, uh, Brooks... Not Brooks. Uh, Pitt kind of maybe partially... I'm, I'm going to imagine in this film, as he's going around and kind of interviewing these guys, we'll probably see bits of his own story... But uh, this does look like rather cold weather stuff, so it's making me think he's either traveling to Russia and you know this is a sign everyone's kind of still wearing armor and stuff. There's also descriptions in the in the book that even though at the time of the book's taking place the war has been won, they are still have to go up to these these frozen regions where there's still frozen zombies and they have to you know kill the zombies while they're frozen, and it's kind of like the last cleanup operations. Which uh, kind of gets me back into uh, a couple of my critiques. You know, one, it seemed like there was way more zombies than there ever should have been. Like, yeah, there's six billion people on Earth, but we've got eight billion zombies by the end, and there's only a billion people left. It's kind of classic. No matter where the, where the humans go, there's hordes and hordes of zombies, which... You know, it's like, like I said before, it's like every small town, there's about three times the population in zombies than there ever was in humans. It'll be interesting to show. I mean, from what I've seen, most people said that, you know, after the initial shock of getting over there, there's zombies running around, they're, they're fairly easy to take out. You use tanks, and you just shoot from the damn uh, tank or APC, or hell, even, you know, a Humvee. You know, a zombie can't shoot back. Or you can just run the things over, which is another thing you kind of always wanted to see in the books. 
you know, they described abandoning tanks, like, oh, tanks were, oh, they're useless. Well, stand in a line, basically, at the end, they described it as stand in a line and march and shoot every zombie on, <laughs> they can see. You would figure a better idea would just line up a bunch of, you know, armored vehicles. They don't have to be necessary tanks. You can, you know, produce a new type of vehicle. That's basically an armored truck where the soldiers can just go off the side and just shoot anything down there and the zombies can't reach them. And anything in front, you just run over. I put a giant fucking steamroller in front of it. Armor up some steamrollers, pull it down, and then you can just drive and crush every zombie in front of you. And put one or two guys on the top where the zombies can't get them with a machine gun. They can hit anything that they don't run over. Instead of how the book describes it, where literally they... It basically did describe as just having the U.S. Army line up from the, you know, the Canadian down to the Mexican border and just walk across the entire nation shooting everything in sight. You see what I mean? It's like, eh, visually, that, that seems kind of stupid. You would want it more of a battle. And the description, I, every forum I've been to, they've ripped the uh, described Battle of Yonkers, which is like this military defeat that causes a great panic that, oh my god, the zombies really are going to destroy everything. But it was rather... Yes, the mil military fucks up all the time, but, man, to the degree they fuck up described in that battle, it's like, oh, man, come on. Get excuse. I mean, I'm hoping that they do in the film. This is... this is. I've said a couple of friends, this is how I would do it. Do it that the the Battle of Yonkers, which is... was never supposed to be... The, I mean, in the book they describe it as, oh, this is... it was just supposed to be a display of uh, military force for the media. My way to do it, you know, have it that it's it's really just a small holding action by a couple troops that were just, you know, supposed to pull back after a little fire, but the media not aware of, and I think this would be great media criticism, the media not actually aware of, you know, what a military tactics are, what's going on actually with the military, interprets this as a major military operation just because they can see what looks like a decent number of troops, and then completely, f you know, misinterprets a, a staged plan withdrawal to a better position, mooring the zombies into a real kill zone, as being, oh my god, they're, they're retreating, we've lost the battle, and then kind of like running into what would have been the kill zone, causing the uh, actual military's plan to get messed up. That would have been better, because there's... and would also provide great media criticism. Because, you know, I've seen stuff in the media and the news where they describe uh, you know, what are essentially nothing more than you know slightly armored up cars? And they go look at these tanks, and it's basically the equivalent of something like an up armored Humvee. There's a big difference between a you know a utility vehicle with armor on it and a tank, and also you know people making you know unqualified journalists who don't cover military stuff making comments on military things, and you're kind of like yeah military and foreign policy things, and you're like these guys have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And I think if you wanted to put make a point in your film and criticize the media, you can do that with Yonkers without making it a completely looked overly contrived how I think it, the book was. Do what I just said, you know. Make it like the media doesn't isn't aware of what's going on and they're overreacting, they're reacting to stuff that's actually not happening because they don't understand stuff, but yet they feel like they have to report on it, and therefore they spread misinformation and panic through their misinterpretation. That's how I would do the Battle of Yonkers thing. And keep some tanks or armor vehicles. You know, if you... you know, I understand if it's hard for Hollywood to get tanks, especially when there's a war. Actually, three wars going on. But, you know, take a couple of you know, cargo trucks, staple on some cheap-looking uh, armor, and go, oh, look, this is our new tactic. That would look better than just a huge line of soldiers. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see. And like I said, this could go very different from how the actual books are, or how the book is, because of the way the book's set up. It it very much allows for, the I would say, the studio to go ahead and create its own stories. Perhaps, especially since Max Brooks is involved in this, we might be seeing uh, stuff that he wanted to put in the novel but never had time to write. So I will say to any fans out there, don't immediately criticize something if it looks like it's a little different from the book, if it's like stories and events we didn't hear or read about in the book. 
this considering Max Brooks' involvement, we could be seeing stuff that he cut out of the book or wanted to put in the book but didn't have time or had like new ideals pop into his head since then. That's my only criticism. I'm I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully this will be a good zombie film. Uh or it could fail. Who knows? I'm hoping we see a poster soon. It's still scheduled for sometime in 2012. I'm hoping in the summer. But uh we shall see. So that is signing off for now. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Uh, my regular movie reviews of the summer will be picking up. I just really didn't want to see anything that was out there this week. Uh, the Planet of the Apes. I've never been a big Planet of the Apes fan, so Rise of the Planet of the Apes didn't appeal to me. The chain up, Change Up certainly didn't appeal to me. But hey, we got uh, we got Fright Night and we got Conan to see before the movies, before the summer is done. So come back for those, or I might have uh, another review or something come up soon. Perhaps I'll review a classic or something. Stay tuned. Signing off.